Okay, welcome back to our uh, box to battlefield uh, with our Rodna. We're going to copy the Rodna painting in the archives, Forgotten Archives number two. And as you guys know, we've been working on the King Tiger, the one that's been blown up in the in this series. It's a fantastic looking King Tiger. We've uh, begun painting the turret and um, today I'm just going to show you guys a little bit of um, painting the recessed panel lines and ver uh, using uh, to me XF62 which is olive drab um, versus using black uh, and why I prefer to use this versus using black. Um, so anyway there's going to be a, a little brief I'm going to spray the base of the King Tiger and the hull of the King Tiger with the panel lines just to give you an idea of, of how I do it, how I go about doing it and, and the reasons why I don't use black and, and, and that is basically um, the following. On this panther which which I've purposely done in black and over sprayed with yellow is to show you guys how harsh black can operate if you're using a modular technique where you're going to have to lighten the panels and what have you the black really really stands out on the under um, when you're doing the recessed lines um, olive drab it is soft soft uh, a nice softer color you can also use um, German gray um, to me it has a black green that is quite you know easy to use I use that on my panther as some of you guys know um, but I purposely uh, painted this model um, to show in our demonstration today and I used black on purpose and what happens gentlemen is the following you use black as a as a framing then you come on with a yellow which is obviously a very uh, light a much lighter color and what happens to to try to get rid of the black shading you have suddenly you have a buildup of yellow color right in say close to where you have just painted in black so all the way around here suddenly you have a extra frame of yellow paint because you've been trying desperately with a buildup of maybe 10 coats to try and camouflage that black so what happens is you end up with a very strong yellow framing around the black and you, and you don't want that going on either and the only reason you have a buildup of yellow paint is because you're trying to hide something whereas if you use this this is a great one for um, the German yellow to use olive drab underneath because it'll just softly fade away and you don't have to build up you know 10 or 11 coats of yellow to hide your recessed panel line color so I know that the schools out on this technique I know that I got a, a lot of guys use black still um, and, and it's it's fine it's it's your model and you're gonna execute it the way you want to do it and especially getting in our comfort zones um, we get in a comfort zone we're happy with how we you know hide these recessed panel lines using black so you stay with it I understand all that I'm just trying to soften the blow for you I'm just trying to make it easy for you so what I'm going to do is just demonstrate a little bit of the recessed panel line painting and then we're going to switch over to the turret which I've um, already put some green on and um, but we're going to carry on with that uh, later this morning. So let's um, let's get to the recessed panel line part of our program. I won't do the whole um, haul here I'll just do the back deck here and then we'll hop back onto the onto the turret. So I will fire up the, the airbrush. I've, I've already mixed the colors in the airbrush. So the mixture is about and I say about because this Dave Brown versus Dave Forrest um, 
there's a lot of ish in my measurements. <laughs> so it's about 65% thinner and the remainder being the uh, remainder being the olive drab. So I use a lot of thinner as you guys know. It cuts down on what they call the orange peel effect. It cuts down on and it, and it spattering, you know, the spidering that can come out. I have never had any of that when I use a strong percentage of thinner with my um, with my paint mixture. Now the uh, thinner I use is the lacquer thinner from Tamiya. And I'll just test off the model. Brushing over top of me a primer, and I just use a rattle can for the primer, the white rattle can. I never use the gray one, but I I do like the white one. Now, gentlemen, also too, to me, it does have a uh, photo etch grill set to go over these these grills back here, which I am going to add to the model. It doesn't. Um, it doesn't matter if I add them now or later today. But normally, I would add them. It, this visually for camera work, it's better not to have them on right now, but. I want them on the model, so unfortunately to me it doesn't provide photo etch in their model kits. They always have an aftermarket, an extra $15 hit on grill sets and what have you. And we all wish, and I, and I speak for most people, we all wish that those grill sets came with the models, but they don't. It's just, we all know it's Tamiya. So just go around, and this is the beautiful thing about the, the most kits, Dragon and, and, and um, Tacom and everybody, everybody has this hatch cut out, you know, if you want to have an open thing with an engine in it, what have you. So all model companies have this hatch open, which is a great thing, thankfully they do, it's easy to get in there.
All right, so that's, and basically you crawl all the way up the hull of the tank and the turret and uh, you can go in around the, um, the wheel sets if you want. Most of that is, as you guys know, covered up with mud and what have you and to save time and what have you, you, you can dodge this part of the um, painting the recessed panel lines in amongst the, the uh, axles and what have you underneath. It's not necessary. But what I'll do is I will um, do the rest off camera. I think everybody gets the idea. And um, what I'll do is I'll come back and start painting this with the three camouflage pattern that I found in one of our great books, which I'll point out to you. Um, the three-tone camouflage is, is pretty standard on a King Tiger. Um, so what we'll do is we'll go through that whole process. Now, as you guys know, this is a knocked out King Tiger. But the only way to show that properly is to do it um, with the three-tone, uh, modulating if, if, if you want to, put the decals on. And then what we're going to do is then we're going to basically attack the color here as far as the burnt out look. So th that, that's a few episodes away. Um, but you have to weather it all because you can't have the weathering on top of the burnt out effect. You must do that in the in the correct order of which it happened in real life. The tank moved along, got weathered, got dusty. Then it got hit with uh, a few uh, tank rounds and burnt. So you're going to have to show that in the order of which it happened in real life. Otherwise, it just doesn't work. So don't don't um, don't start to put the the pinks and the um, burnt out colors on here before you weather it. Don't do that. You you must weather. The three-tone camouflage and the put the decals on then put the burnt out look so so there's a process here um, and it's gonna take a little bit of um, YouTube time and what have you but we're gonna get to the end result it's gonna be fantastic so just stay tuned and um, I'll be back to you momentarily with the, with the turret thanks for watching and I'll see you in a minute okay gentlemen so Finding paint schemes for uh, tiger tanks is not very hard. There's lots of books around Surprisingly enough though, it's one of the few subject matters that squadron signal has never tapped into they've done tiger tanks and, and all kinds of um, Panthers and you name it from squadron, but for some reason I haven't seen a lot out of them on tiger tanks, but nevertheless um there's all kinds of books available, such as this one here. Now, this book here was, I think, came out in 2008 or 2000. It would be easy to find the copyright date. But nevertheless, it's a fantastic book for paint schemes. And I'm going to do mine similar to the one on page 188. Um, but I also I also paying attention to the, to the books that I've already mentioned about the paint scheme. I just don't want to do an exact. Um, copy of the Rodna painting simp simply because it puts you in a pigeonhole. Suddenly you have to, um, um, you know, there's only one side of that tiger, for instance. Whereas if I use a tiger similar to this, I can um, almost make it up as I go along too on the other side of the tank, which, which I want to do. And I don't want to put 104 on it, and I don't want to put his numbers on it, which are actually... Um, not visible in his painting too well but nevertheless having a good reference as far as color goes and I do like this um, choice of colors here and, I, and I've monkeyed around with a few greens um, to get close to that green color and um, we also have to realize too that it's it's a printing thing the printers are the ones that determine really these colors of green and, and not necessarily the German um, paint shop. So I'm basing my tank on a on a printed copy piece of paper versus what the uh, Germans might have used in the field. But to come up with a similar type of green, as you, some of you who have watched me uh, do my Panther and what have you, I, I really like to me a XF-71 uh, cockpit green you know that I've been using that over the, the last little while is sort of a 
uh, foundation color, a start to my German dark green color. And, and to, to get that color, I also am going to use a little bit of olive drab and a little bit of white. And I always use gloss white. I like my colors um, to have a little bit of eggshell to them, so I always try to get in a little bit of gloss. Now, if I don't, let's say I was just using these two colors, you can always take, to me, a number 22, which is clear gloss, and add it to this mixture. And it's just, I, I just find that if, if I don't do that, sometimes I can have them come out a little chalky. So I use gloss white versus flat white for my combination here. And I would say that I use at least 50%, oh, probably closer to 70%, uh, 71, and then the other two colors make up the rest. But it's an experimental, uh, you know, thing that I use on my little mat here until I nail it down right. So sometimes my calculations and my uh, percentages are off, but, but definitely this is going to be the majority of the color. So I've mixed it, I've pre-mixed it in the jar. It's in my airbrush, ready to cook here. And uh, I'm going to just spray a little bit and show the effect of how this pre-shading actually works. So I will... Uh, just add a little more thinner. The mixture again is about 65% thinner and I've already pre-mixed this off of camera but I'm going to increase my thinner just a little bit. Maybe to up in the neighborhood of uh, 70%. Now some um, painters out there don't want to go nearly that high and that's and that's that's fine there's no problem uh, the standard if you guys remember in the 80s and 90s was sort of 60 percent paint 40 percent um thinner and it, and if that's the school that you've attended and enjoy st stick to what you know like i say there's a little bit of dna from mike rinaldi and dave forrest and you know all these guys in my modeling so Adam Wilder and all that, I take from all you guys and I adapt it to the things that I do. So, all right, so I'm going to just practice a little bit on my paper first. Get in my comfort zone with my paint. Unfortunately, gentlemen, maybe the camera isn't necessarily going to pick up the pre-shading, but don't worry about it as the results of the camera. I can visually see the results of the pre-shading, so you guys will too. Don't worry about if you can't see it at home through the channel, through the quality of the camera or anything like that. Don't worry about it. It's 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 out there and it's happening. So. Now where this um, where this is really going to show up is when I start to add a little bit of the the uh, German yellow to it. You'll you'll really notice how important it is um, at home when you're doing this.
Now, if this was, like I say, gentlemen, if I, uh, if I'd painted my pre-shading in black, I'd be putting on coat after coat of green to try and camouflage that black. Whereas, as you can see, in one or two coats, I have shadow build up in certain areas now without using a lot of green. Like, right in here, you can see definitely um, a layering happening in and around different things back here. Like, like look at, you can see easily a layer where it's dark and it's moving to light. So, like I say, if it was black, the contrast would be too heavy. And then I'd be sitting there putting on green coat after green coat. And then suddenly you have a patch of green paint here that almost looks like a stripe trying to camouflage my black recess line. So you don't want that going on. So um, now if I, what I'll do is I will finish off this off camera, add a little white to our formula here, and then you'll just see how the layering effect is going to work quite effectively. So I will just finish this off camera quickly and then um, switch and add a little bit of our gloss white to our color. And then you'll see how this modulates and comes up a little bit. So anyway, give me just a second and I will quickly paint this and then we'll uh, add a little white to our formula here. Okay, so what I've done, gentlemen, is I've, I've finished off with the with the uh, green um with the foundation green now i've added about oh 15 percent gloss white to it and in this case when you're adding the gloss versus the flat now i, I can switch to flat white if i want because it's a modulation color or mixing color and um but I, i'm not the least bit worried if it comes out eggshell whatsoever so what i've done is i've added thinner to our mix here and I've added about 15% white and now I'm just going to hit these high points right here as I'll point out with this little paintbrush the top of the these caps here the top of this grill a little bit more should be a little bit more green but again I'm going to put the the grills the Tamiya grills on top of this um, moving forward so um, anyway I'm just going to hit some high points with a little bit of modulation all right, I shall do that. Okay, so I'm gonna hit those areas. Now where the drawback of all this is going to be is I'm going to add two more colors on here. I'm going to add a little bit of German red and a little bit of German yellow. And some of the nice areas that I've just done are going to vanish into thin air. But then what I will do is I'll also bring those up. Now you see there's the perfect example of where you're going to have to paint a little bit of extra and I hope the camera can pick this up but there is a little bit of striping there now just picture if that striping was actually black god you'd be painting and ruining all this in here with putting on too much green paint so I'm going to just So as you can see, the back deck's starting to come together. The um, 
The amount of mo uh, modeling time, let me just shut the noise maker off. The amount of modeling time here, as you guys know, is taking us about three or four minutes on the airbrush. So this is all gonna happen quite rapidly. And you just move up your, up the hull as we go. So obviously for filming reasons, we're gonna just concentrate on this area. And um, now I do have the pant, uh, King Tiger turret on the way. And what I'll do is I'll just, because that nice white modulation color is in the airbrush as we speak, I will um I'll do a little bit of that too. So there there's how it's gonna sit. And as you can see, I've um I've already off camera painted a little bit of the turret. And there's our shell hits, and that's gonna be the concentration of this whole exercise in the end. Um but I have to get you guys there. So as you can see, I've left it out of the green because I'm gonna use a whole series of paint colors in here, such as to me a flesh, to me a hull red. Um, a purpley color, a burned out color. So the layering is going to happen and a few less layers at this point are going to be beneficial down the road. So, But while I have that nice modulated green in there, I'm just going to modulate our turret a little bit. And then we're going to get into the red, brown and the German yellow. All in this session. And then we'll Hopefully next week we'll put the decals on and weather a little bit. Because I don't know exactly where I'm going to put the other two colors, the German yellow and what have you, I'm going to modulate. And just because of the shape of the turret, this area in this section here is going to gather a little more light than maybe um, not. So we'll just collect a little bit of light in this area. And around the hole for sure. And in my mind's eye, I, I can move forward on this turret pretty well, so that's why you see these white patches here. I know that they're gonna be taken up with the red brown and the and the German yellow. So don't be alarmed that it looks rather odd at the moment. It's just because in my mind's eye, I know where I'm gonna putting down those other colors. So, but anyway, you probably can't pick it up very well on the camera, but. Like I say, it's a very subtle modulation, but it's very effective. And that's just by adding a little bit of gloss white to our green mixture. So what I'll do is now I'll start to get ready for the other colors to be added. I'm gonna go with, uh, I think the red brown next, and then I'll switch to the German yellow. Okay, so we've uh, modulated just one coat of modulation on the back of the hull, as you can see. Now there might be more modulation moving forward, but that's after we get the rest of the colors on. Those things you're gonna recognize moving forward, but maybe not at this stage of the game. So to me, it has a number of colors that you can use for red-brown. They have hull red, they have red-brown XF64, and XF9 for the hull red. They've got a new color out, It's it's not, brand brand new but it's out in the last couple of years if you haven't tried it you might want to try it it's 79 and it's a uh, linoleum uh, deck brown and that's the one I'm gonna use um, I mix it with a little gray a little bit of flesh but I'm just uh, you know and I le I keep this in waiting just for modulation purposes but this will just warm up the color. If you find that the, because of the gray added to the linoleum, linoleum, um, it starts to get cloudy on you, just add a little warmth to it. Just add a uh, paintbrush scoop of flesh and it'll, it'll come back to you. But the majority of the color obviously is gonna be 
number 79, number XF79. So if you um, do this freehand, which I'm going to do sort of a hard edge, um, but not with masks, but just with hand drawing, um, one of the things that you're going to have to use is a, is a number two or a number one paintbrush to draw your design out on your back of your hull here. So it's easy to do that by dipping your pen or, or paintbrush into this color and then applying. But if you do that, the demarcation lines will never go away. You have to go one step further. I have already mixed the colors in my paintbrush, in my airbrush, and I'm going to use this because it's already mixed with the lacquer thinner. Those, this is the paint mixture that I'm going to use. If you just go from here onto your model, it's going to be a disaster. It's going to, it's going to create lines that you can't get rid of. So you're going to have to go into here. And this is a very, very thin down um, red brown. But that's what you want. Because all you need is, is a line to follow. So I'm just going to create a line. And the camouflage patterns on King Tigers are, are pretty wide bands of color. So you're, uh, this is not going to be like a Panzer III type of coloring. So there, you can easily see that between those two lines. There's a line here and a line there. And then I'm just going to spray in between. So let me just uh, fire up the airbrush. there's your red brown line so as you can see it, it happens quite quickly but it what I did not do is is do all these patterns all over the back of this hull and then fill it in going from this section over to this section over to this section I did it immediately mainly because I know that the painted on line is still alive it's still it's not dry whatsoever it's got a little bit of moisture still left in it so the demarcation lines are zero you can't find anything as far as a line goes where i painted that so it's, it's very simple to see now like i say tamiya has provided a grill set to go with that if i'd put those grill sets on for camera reasons um, it would have been difficult for the camera to deke around and everything to show the lines that I just drew. So like I say, moving forward, there's going to be these grills on here and what have you. So, But let me draw a few more and then we'll get to the Panzer, uh, the Panzer yellow color as well. So remember, go with your number two or number one brush. Go into your airbrushing paint. And we'll just... Uh, with our faint little line on and you know how well you you know how well you can operate your own airbrush I know that I can get within these lines pretty easily if you're not um, if your airbrush is in such a way that it can't um, fill in this line just broaden the line a little bit you know get in your own comfort zone and all I'm really doing guys is just it's like the yellow lines on the on the street outside. All I'm doing is giving you you guys know not to cross those lines, and you can see how faint they are on the, on our model here. So now I just fire up the airbrush and fill them in. And like I say, those lines are going to stay wet for um, 
30 seconds or so. Alright, there's the next chapter right there. So now what I'll do is I'll just tighten this up a little bit. So there's two um little um, sections there and now I'll switch out this color for uh, some German yellow and I'll show you how to add that in but don't try this freehand don't try to do it without using this as a guide you're gonna you at the end of it you're gonna be all over the map with your with your tank so um, use your references in your books and what have you for the patterns and then, um, and, I, and I've been studying this pattern all week. I, I didn't just flip open that Tiger Tank book and, and away I go. I've been studying this a little bit. So I, I, I'm not making this up as I go. You know, these patterns are, uh, are going to be somewhat precise. So anyway, I, what I'll, I'll do off camera is I'll switch to our yellow. And that's basically just going to be Tamiya XF60. And a little bit of gloss white and then I will um, connect the connect the third color and um, so give me a minute I'll clean out the airbrush get this red because you don't want this red brown um, mixing in with your Panzer yellow so let me clean this out thoroughly and then um, then we'll add our third color to our engine deck here all right okay Thank so you. now we'll add our third color and as you can see by the book here now uh, this is 104 Tiger Tank, and like I say, I don't like to copy it exactly the patterns, but you can see how there's very little yellow. Now whether or not it's the German tank factories running out of yellow, maybe because they have a lot of King Tigers, there's tons and tons of yellow being used, and therefore they don't have a lot left. I, I don't know for sure, but just basically flipping through this book, I found that... Um, the yellow was not the majority of the color. It was a uh, it was a color certainly used. There's no pictures in this book where there's just green and dark red. That definitely is not in the book. There's always yellow somewhere. So I'm not going to put a lot of yellow on mine either. You know, I'm going to stick to sort of the references that I have in front of me. And once again, I, I've mixed the colors and I've used... Um, XF60 is the major color, a little bit of gloss white, um, just for tone and, and to lighten it up. I find that late in the war tanks, this color straight out of the bottle is a little too strong. So I've always added, especially in the sort of 1945, late 44, um, Panzer Yellow just seemed to take on a little yellow and a little lighter shade. So therefore, I've added these two together. And once again, I'm gonna. I've mixed it in here. I've 
um, put my thinner in as well, about 65% thinner. So I'm going to brush it on now and you're going to see my uh, adding of the, of the yellow color. So I take from the, uh, the mixed airbrush. And again, I just want to have a, a little bit of a, a line to follow. It's almost like a very faint little stain more than anything. It's just a tracking line so that I know where to go with this. And I'm going to butt it up right against this red-brown. So I really don't need this line. The, the red will be my line on the other side. So you can see it's extremely faint line, but that's better than um, than going straight out of these bottles. You, you won't be able to hide that line if you do it any other way. And all you need is a visual. So we start the color off the off the tank. And then just start to fill it in. So there's one line, but now I want to talk about um, these initial recess lines that we did with our um, with our olive drab color. If you did not do that olive drab um, recess panel line uh, initially, all these bolts, which are now here, and you can see how these things are now framed, even though there's been green and red, and in this case, um, green and yellow, you can easily see where I've um, put the recessed um, lines and colors on, the olive drab. Um, so don't think that because of us putting on three layers of color, all those things are not important and they faded away and it was a waste of time. As you can see, they're sticking out still. Um, now I'm just going to put on one more band of yellow over here and um, I'll show you that process and then and then maybe modulate a little bit of the yellow. So let's uh, let's put on our next line. Let's just use our reference for a second. Now I don't even know if the camera can pick up these faint little lines. Alright. 
Can you see them there? They might be difficult to see, but certainly when you're doing this at home, they'll be very visual, that's for sure. Start off the model with the color. So there's another two little sections of yellow made up. And as you can see, our tiger's starting to come together. And you'll visually see if there's not enough yellow going on just add some little dashes as you can see in our reference book there's a, the odd little dash of yellow um, here in our book like look like look at this small little dash of yellow and a little dash of yellow here and in here so when your model is closing in on completion as far as the camouflage patterns if you find you need a little bit of extra dark red or dark yellow just start adding them in but use a reference point don't just um don't just take it out of your head you know use some sort of reference as a guide it'll it'll really help and then once again as you can see gentlemen the uh, the olive drab has certainly um helped us bring out these um bringing out these big huge lug nuts and screws and bolts that hold the back end of this machine together so then um another neat effect now especially because there's no hatch is you can either do sponging um or um just with your fine fine brush start to add on a few little scratches and then i'm going to point out which filter to go on on top of this so but as you can see the uh now visualize this whole thing um you know, it's taken us, I guess, a little more than half an hour to do that back deck. So then just break it into your things and suddenly you're going to realize, gentlemen, that this is a two and a half hour process here. This is, um, it's going to take a little time. So if you're going to have this time broken up, make sure that you have your color mixtures written down on a piece of paper. If you're doing the mixture thing, if you're not, don't worry about it, but Make sure you write down your mixtures or mix up enough in an empty Tamiya jar that you can come back to them. Um, put the lid, lid on tight and if you have to walk away for a day or two, um, you've got that mixture cooking away in your jars here. So save those. If, if you run out of Tamiya and you've got an empty jar, just clean it out with a little bit of Tamiya paint thinner. Save your little Tamiya jars. And then, like I say, if you're mixing paints, they come in very handy for that. So what I'm going to do off camera is I'm going to finish these um, uh, camouflage patterns and then we're going to start with a filter. Um, we're going to sort of go into the Dave Forrest type of uh, part of our sessions at that point. We're going to get into, I'm probably going to put on an Adam Wilder yellow filter over the whole thing and, um, and then start building up a little bit of weathering. The decals will be on by the next time I see you guys. And um, deckling over Zimmerit is pretty easy, but I will demonstrate it um, shortly. Um, there's enough solutions out on the market that will help you get your decal to sit easily down on this type of Zimmerit. So we'll get the Zimmerit, um, the numbers pinned down, 
and then we'll then we'll start getting into the um, the the shell hits and the colors that we're going to use for that. So we've got um, we're well on our way now. Uh, let's continue, and then we'll lower the suspension or or show how we're going to paint that sort of part of the tank as well with the lowered suspension. So we've got a lot to cover, and uh, yeah, we'll see you next time. Thanks so much for watching. Take care.